everyone, and welcome to Hope Chapel Pearl West Freedom Point. We're just so excited for you to come and join us on this journey that we're taking. And we want to just encourage you with Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. So let's put our trust in him. Let's put our confidence in him today and moving forward. If you join me in prayer, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can put all our trust in you. All our confidence is in you, Lord. We're giving you all of our situations and saying no backs. We don't want it back. We want to give it all to you so that we can just trust you and love you and have you guide us through everything that we are facing. Father, help us to have this non-wavering confidence to be non-hesitational when things come our way. Because Lord, we're going to fear, we're going to feel that heat come, but we're not going to be moved. We're going to have our roots planted right into you. Lord, we're going to have our roots planted deep and why in you so we will not be uprooted but anything that comes our way lord we will face with you on our sides with our trust fully in you so lord help us today and help us to move forward with this confidence believing in you lord believing in your miracles and when we see things not happening the way we want it take us out of the picture because we are believing in you. So we thank you, Father. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the honor and glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Father God, we love you. <laughs> and we're going to pass it on to the worship team who's going to continue to usher us into his presence. Ooh, thank you, Sherry, for that encouraging scripture. We're so excited to worship the Lord this morning. Come on, team, let's give it up for God. He is so good. We're going to get into worship. Here at Hope Chapel Pro S, we believe that Jesus is all about freedom, and part of being free in the Lord is being able to worship him. So let's go. Hallelujah. 
hope and joy that we get, Lord, from, from you and only you, Lord. We praise you. Caught up in your presence, I just want to sit here. Oh 
Give him a hand of praise. Woo! All right. Thank you. And to continue the service, we're going to pass it over to Pastor James. Greetings. Greetings, family. How about giving the Lord one more hand of praise this morning? Man, this evening, this afternoon, God is just so worthy to be praised. Welcome to Hope Chapel Pearl West Freedom Point where it's all about Jesus, and Jesus is all about freedom. Galatians 5 and 1 says that. It says, hey, it is for freedom that Christ has made us free, and we are so glad about it. And I love the way our service started today, Sister Sherry jumping off with Jeremiah 17, and our takeaway for that, and we want you to have that takeaway as well, is that having confidence in God, it brings freedom. When I'm able to put my total trust, my total confidence, and all my cares into his hands, guess what? It relieves us of the pain, the anxiety, the worry, the frustration. Yes, so we are to put our trust in God because through that, it brings freedom. Amen. So do me a favor, go ahead and put it in the chat where you're worshiping with us from today. And we just want to send greetings all over the world, the land and the country. We are especially excited about our family members in the Philippines, yep, who, who, praise God for you all and your level of excitement and your love for God. Man, it's just, just amazing. And then for the 48, man, we are loving on you as well, especially those that are in Oklahoma, California, Arkansas, Texas, Virginia. Listen, God is still on the throne. And then finally to our islands here in Hawaii. Man, we are saying aloha and God bless you. We're worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're just so glad that you have, uh, have joined us today. So listen, we want to let you know that we're here for you. That's right. I said it. We are here for you. I know a lot of people have kind of like allowed the crisis of COVID and, and social ills to kind of die off and be in the foreshadow, but we still understand there are a lot of things that are going on in the world today, and we have not forgotten it. We haven't forgotten about our first responders. Please know we're praying for you. We're praying for your families and your loved ones. And not only that, we're praying that God would continue to bring peace in the land and the country. He says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. And we here at Freedom Point, Hawaii, Hope Chapel, Pearl West, we are praying for you. And so if you ever need us, 
make sure you reach out to us through instant messaging. You can email us. You can reach out to us on our Facebook. And not only that, our website as well, because we want you to know we're just not saying it, but we really mean it. Finally, I'd like to tell you that our connect groups are alive and well. And when we start talking about freedom, that's where you really get to experience the joys of living life together in a social media environment. In fact, we don't even call them social media. We call them social ministry. It's where we get to come together from all over, drop into one space, a space of no shame where we can be real authentic transparent and love on one another and cheer one another on for the glory of god that is our heart and of course it's out there for you uh, if you go to our website it'll be there i believe it's in the chat right now for those of you who are on facebook you may see it populate but please know we want you to be a part and we want to grow together as a church family as a global family as a local family, just the way the Lord had in mind. Amen. So with that said, we're going to transition into a time where many of you say, hey, you know what? This ministry has been a true blessing to me, and I want to find a way to, to bless this ministry. Now, some of you will say, well, how can we do that, PJ? First and foremost, I'm going to ask that you pray for us. Keep us covered in prayer, because we believe that when we pray, God moves any way he chooses to move. The other way in which you would be able to support us, if you so desire, is to give unto the Lord. I assure you, this is safe ground. But listen, we're not looking for money. We're looking for your prayers, and we're looking to connect with you. But for our church family who says, PJ, I really want to give to the Lord, we're going to give you space to do that now. After I pray for the offering, we will be hearing from Pastor Mark Chun today, who will be delivering the, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise for Pastor Mark Chun. Oh my goodness. We started in this series a few weeks ago titled Believe. And we believe that this series was God given, God ordained, which talked about the core fundamental of our faith and also the anchor for our church, putting our confidence in a God who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We know it's gonna be an awesome message. So after I pray, the next words that you will hear will be from the speaker of today, Pastor Mark Chun. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you today and we just thank you for life itself. We thank you that you have allowed us from all over the world, all over the globe to drop in this time frame and just worship you in spirit, in truth, in the safety of our home, our offices, our cars, wherever we may find ourselves. And so, Father, we pray that, Father, as we give unto you our prayers, our sacrifice, and Lord God, even of resources, that you would bless it 10, 20, 40, some hundredfold, according to your goodwill and pleasure. Finally, Father, we're praying and, and asking that you will continue to meet the needs of your people all over. Father, go into their spaces. Let them know that you're God, and through you, all things are possible. Take away the sting, take away the pain, take away the frustration. As they turn their issues over to you, God, you step right in the center of it and God bring them to a place of peace, comfort, joy, happiness, which we define as freedom. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank God. Family, Pastor Mark Chun, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor James. Welcome. Hello and welcome to all of you out there for this Sunday's worship service here at Hope Chapel Pro West Freedom Point, where we are all about Jesus and Jesus is all about freedom. My name is Mark C and I am honored and thrilled to be here today to go ahead and share the message. Now today is Palm Sunday. It's the day when 
we recognize when Jesus first, when Jesus came back into Jerusalem, he was on his donkey and people were out there putting palm leaves on the ground and worshiping him because they recognized that the Messiah had returned. And they knew that there's something great about him. And so it's apropos that we are in this series now called Believe because it's time for us to go ahead and remind ourselves that Jesus wasn't just a nice guy. Jesus is the son of God. And so a part of this series is to actually talk about believe. Believe in the power that he has. To believe in the miracles that Jesus can perform and did perform. It is a series where we remind ourselves that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. Jesus is able to calm the storms as today as he did 2,000 years ago. Now, last week, Pastor James narrowed the discussion down to miraculous healing. He touched on the many scriptures that emphasize and show that Jesus gives life, that Jesus heals. And he emphasized the point that healing is still available today. That's right. Healing is still available today. Now, we fortunately live in a world where science and medical knowledge and technology has grown to help us increase our ability to overcome many ailments and diseases. But make no mistake about it. This science is not a replacement for God. In fact, God, as a provider of all things, gave all these doctors and scientists the smarts and abilities that they possess to invent things like, like, like painkillers and antiseptics. You know, God is the healer, and He provides the intermediaries the doctors, the nurses, to dispense this healing. Now, by analogy, God rules over all people, but he anointed and he used rulers, kings, and prophets to lead and shepherd his people. In the same way, he's using doctors and nurses to dispense his healing. Just don't get it mixed up. The healing still comes from Jesus. Now, furthermore, God expects us to use the means available to help achieve healing. Things like these medicines and, and ointments. Now, kind of reminded of that joke, you know, where a man was caught on the roof of his home, surrounded by floodwaters after a huge storm and the floodwaters are rising up. And he turned down rescue by a kayak, by a boat, and by, by a helicopter, each time saying, no thanks, no thanks, I'm good. God will save me. And after the floodwaters swept him out to his death, he stood before God in heaven and complained. He said, I had faith in you. Why didn't you save me? And God said, what do you mean? I sent a kayak. I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter. What more did you need? God expects us to use what he provides for all aspects of our life, including healing. Now, let's be clear. For the sake of this message, we are talking about what they call organic healing, one that physically fixes a condition, and not just a healing that allows us to accept the situation, which is important in its own way. But right now we're talking about organic healing. And furthermore, we are talking about miraculous healing, miraculous he healing. Now, one Bible dictionary defines a miracle as, and get this now, a striking interposition of divine power, which the operations of the ordinary course of nature are overruled, suspended, or modified. And miraculous healing in the scriptures have been defined as instantaneous, with one exception, but instantaneous. They're complete and permanent. And they are showing no signs of relapse once the miracle happens. Well, except in the cases of when some dead people were raised to life, because sooner or later, they subsequently died again. But otherwise, we're talking about instantaneous, complete, and permanent healing by which the ordinary course of nature is overruled. It is not expected by the prevailing human culture and human knowledge and understanding of how nature normally works. Miraculous healing. And you know what? It is still available today. That's right, miraculous healing is still available today. Now, before I go on, I think we all need to clear out that lingering question in our mind. You know, that proverbial elephant in the room. Let's just get that thing out of the way because otherwise 
you're not going to listen to the rest of this message of how to get that healing. Now, the thing that I think most of us have going through our minds right now is miraculous healing happens right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Show me. Show me that it happens right now. Otherwise, I ain't going to listen anymore to you. See, I think most of us can accept that Jesus did these miraculous things long ago. We're good at that. We read it in the book. We're good at that. That's fine. But we struggle with the skepticism. When we try to believe the miraculous in the modern day world. So listen to the following examples and get convinced. And if you need the time, pause the video. Come to grips with it. Look it up. Google it. And when you're ready to hear how you can access healing from Jesus, restart the video. Here are some modern day examples. December 24th. 2011, that wasn't that long ago, that was 10 years ago, this lady by the name of Emma McKinley experienced the miraculous. She had an accident at work one day and she became wheelchair bound for 18 years. As she was sitting in this wheelchair for all those years, she gradually became more debilitated with a crooked foot, a closed fist, a twisted neck and spine, but she maintained her faith in Jesus. She kept praying to Jesus for healing. Then on that Christmas Eve night, or actually the day before Christmas Eve, a night in 2011, she fell out of her wheelchair. And she lay on the ground for eight hours in excruciating pain. And she called out to Jesus for help. And by her accounts, Jesus physically appeared to her as an awesome white robe. She could feel her foot, her neck, and her spine being straightened out. He then helped her up. And she started walking. And Emma's two sons and her grandchildren came over a few hours later. And they were amazed as she walked down the hallway to them. Miraculous healing. That was 2011. Miraculous healing. Second example, January 19th, 2015. That was six years ago. January 19th, 2015. A person by the name of John Smith, 14 years old, fell through a frozen lake in Missouri. He was submerged for 15 minutes. Now they got him out of the water, took him to the emergency room, the doctors worked on him, but concluded that they had done all they could and the boy wouldn't survive. But his mom, Joyce, went into the emergency room and prayed, Holy Spirit, bring back my son. And you know what? John Smith came back to life. And not only did he come back to life, he came back fully recovered with no other things going on because of that experience. Story true or not, story became the basis for the 2019 movie, Breakthrough. Check it out. Miraculous healing. That was six years ago. Third example, St. Marianne Cope. Now prior, she was known as Mother Marianne. She served on the islands of Molokai, Maui, and Oahu. And she became canonized as a saint in October 21st, 2012. Now why am I bringing this up? The process to becoming a saint involves meaning a really, really high standard. You can't just be a nice guy. Amongst many things, the Catholic Church demands proof that the applicant has such a connection with Jesus that miracles are performed via prayer to that applicant. Now, I'm not here to talk about the concept of sainthood, but I do want to point out that the Catholic Church goes through a lot of effort to prove that miraculous healing that comes from Jesus is documented, and such was the case for St. Marianne. In 1993, a woman was miraculously cured after multiple organ failures following prayers to Mother Marianne. The woman's recovery was certified, certified by the Catholic Church. Miraculous healing, verified and documented by the Catholic Church. My fourth example is Pretty well known to all of us here in Hawaii. Saint Damien, better known to most of us as Father Nabin, served at Kalao Papa on the island of Molokai. On July 3rd, 2008, the Catholic Church approved that a miraculous healing occurred and it was attributed to Father Damien, leading to his eventual canonization to become Saint Damien. The healing that was documented was a 1998 healing of a Honolulu woman. She was suffering from terminal lung cancer. But after praying, Ms. Audrey Toguchi recovered from the illness. Now, this case is documented in the October 2000 issue 
of the Hawaii Medical Journal. It notes that she experienced a complete spontaneous regression of lung cancer in 1998. Miraculous healing, verified and documented. Miraculous healing, verified and documented. Now, while the miracles noted for the two saints are viewed as acts of intercession, the point is that the miraculous healing still occurred via the power from Jesus. Jesus heals today like he healed yesterday. Let me say that again. Jesus heals today like he healed yesterday. So how do we tap into this power? Jesus laid out an example for us to follow in the book of Mark. And we're looking at Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 34. So let me go ahead and read that out for you. And then we'll kind of break it down a little bit. It says, when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jair Jairus came. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And the woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from all that suffering. Now, once Jesus realized that power had gone off from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? His so disciples, of course, said, you see the people crowded against you. His disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Wow, that's a lot to take in. <laughs> but first and foremost, let's be clear. Jesus heals. There is no doubt Jesus heals. And it is important to understand what the lady did to access this healing and kind of contrast that with the other people in the account. So let's break it down a little bit. In verses 21 through 24, we saw that Jesus was surrounded by a bunch of people as he got off the boat. And we had Jairus come up to him and say, my little daughter is dying. Well, let me back up a step. Jairus came up to him and he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A couple of things I pulled out of that is a large crowd gathered. Yeah. But interesting, only Jairus is mentioned by name. And he came onto the scene after the crowd was there. So I kept asking myself, what did he do differently? I realized he actually pleaded with Jesus directly. Because of that, Jesus chose to go with Jairus to heal his daughter. See, I gather from this that Jesus listens if you actually submit to him and speak earnestly. It would appear the crowd didn't. Now in verse 24b, a large crowd followed and pressed around him. So again, we come back to this large crowd following Jesus. No personal space, no six feet, nothing. They're like right up against him, pressed up on him. Now, what were they looking for? What were they going following him for? Were they like starstruck? You know, were they going to be grabbing their, their phones and going to take a selfie? Like, hey, there you go. I'm with Jesus. You know, what were they doing? What exactly were they surrounding him? Can you imagine if we had a, somebody that was a star walking on the street? What would be people doing? Were they looking for entertainment? 
Were they looking for, I don't know, something spectacular? Were they looking to see Jesus fail to tear him down? Well, we know it wasn't to get personally healed. Jairus already showed what to do. You have to go directly to Jesus. This crowd wasn't. Now in verses 25 to 26, it goes on to say, a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. Let's take a look at it. What was going on with this lady? Some scholars believe it was a menorrhagia, a disease in which this, the menstrual flow is abnormally prolonged. They may produce anemia. Point is, it was bleeding. It was bleeding. Now, if you remember back in the day, if you were bleeding, you were considered unclean. And she was probably shunned by the people. Shunned by the people for 12 years. And they're all going, you know that girl? She's unclean. Stay away from her. Don't touch her. She's got cooties. That was going off. Can you imagine living that way for 12 years? She was suffering. And she tried everything else to fix this. So never mind even just the physical side. She just had all this emotional stuff going on. And it was getting worse. She was desperate. In verses 27 to 28, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd, touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. I will be healed. So I tried to get into her mind. What was she doing? She must have heard that he can heal. She heard about this famous guy, Jesus, coming over there. So she thought, I need to get close to him. She became humble. She was humble, let me say. She was thinking, Jesus is so powerful, and I'm just a small issue. And maybe just touching his clothes will heal me. It wasn't something where she said, get in front of Jesus, said, Jesus, I need a whole hour of your time. I need you to whip up a magic potion for me to drink pronto right now. No, man, she recognized where she was. She said, I just want to go ahead and touch it. That's all. Second thing, she was bold. She pushed through a crowd that was already, as documented, pressed up against Jesus. She pushed through that crowd. And, you know, she must have known being the unclean one. Like I said, everyone probably thought a lot less of her. And we're probably thinking, get, get away, get away, you dirty girl. And yet she went ahead and said, no, I'm going to go for it. She was bold. Like Jairus, she was different than the crowd. She knew what she wanted, knew Jesus could provide it, and she went for it. In verse 29, it says, immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from suffering. Immediately, she felt freed from her suffering after 12 years worth of angst, worry, and despair, all of that lifted up from her. Was she happy? Duh. <laughs> Miraculous healing. Miraculous healing. But there's more to the story. And I want you guys to catch this part. There's more to the story. In verse 30, at once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Now you got to ask the question, why did Jesus do that? I mean, it's reasonable to think that Jesus knew who touched him. We know that, I mean, Jesus knew everything else. He knew who was going to betray him. He knew what the Pharisees were going to say. So it's such a small thing for him to know who touched him. So why did he go ahead and do that? Well, he wanted to make an issue out of it. He wanted to make an issue out of it. In verse 31 and 32, it continues on. It says, the disciples said, you see the crowd against you. And yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Again, we know Jesus had the power to know what was going on. So he clearly had a purpose in lingering. And part of me thinks by gazing over the crowd, that message to the crowd also was, I don't know you. <laughs> Your fear of missing out and why you're trying to get these selfies with me doesn't impress me, man. I'm looking for the one who is really searching for me. In verse 33, then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. Bold, bold. She stepped forward despite possible ridicule and scolding from the crowd. 
but yet humble, possibly afraid that Jesus would be mad because she touched his robe unsolicited and took some of that healing power. Humble, she submitted to Jesus. She fell at his feet. She didn't stand out and say, yeah, I was the one. Why? What's up with that? No, she fell at his feet, physically indicating that Jesus is the Lord. She earnestly confessed. And so what did Jesus do? He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. He confirmed that her faith healed her. He emphasized that her healing has freed her from the captivity of suffering. And here's the thing. He used that healing to amplify his power. He exclaimed, not just to her, he exclaimed to everybody that was pressed in and crowded around her and said, daughter, your faith has healed you so that everybody else could go in, could hear. He didn't do it in secret. He didn't just brush it off and walk. He could have done that. He could have said, Ooh, healing went off, right? kept on going. No, he stopped and he made a point of it because he wanted to amplify his power. So what does that mean for you? To me, this account reveals two categories of people. One, those who truly believe in God and all that he stands for and promises, including that Jesus is his son and all the power and healing that comes with it. Jairus and the lady knew that. Then two, there are those in the crowd, those that only pretend to know him. And even though they just know a few facts, but they say, yeah, yeah, I know Jesus. That's why we're going down to the boat to go and check him out. No. Nah. They just want to be with the popular people. And they also have me have this fear of missing out. Like, well, if I don't go, I might miss out into some kind of great thing that's going on down there. That's the second one. Question is, which one do you want to be? Which one of these two people do you want to be? It is clear that the lady was able to tap into the miraculous healing power of God. And I'm hoping that's the one you want to be. How? Once she was bold. She was bold. She was bold in the face of self-doubt. Now, let me ask you this. Can you say that you believe wholeheartedly that Jesus can heal? Can you say that you believe wholeheartedly that Jesus can heal? See, fully believing is not always easy. Now, there are times where I could be in a hospital situation, where I'd hear the doctor's prognosis and immediately revert <laughs> to praying mostly for comfort and not for healing. Just, just help this family get through this. And um, yeah, and I wouldn't really focus on the healing part. And I would tell myself I was doing this for good intentions because I didn't want people to say negative things about my God if the patient didn't pull through. In truth, I was probably more worried that I'll be letting people down. But I was wrong. I was doing more harm, more harm to my God's reputation by doing it this way. See, we've been trained all our lives that one plus one is equal to two. And now, by this healing thing, I'm telling you that sometimes one plus one equals one. And that's crazy. That's crazy. One plus one equals one? No way. One plus one equals two. We've been taught that. Unless we change our mathematical operating system or our belief system. Because once you adjust your belief system, what once seemed impossible is now possible. You see, one plus one equals one in Boolean algebra. All of us math geeks know that. And now we're imploring all of us Christian geeks, all of us Jesus freaks, to boldly go forth and believe wholeheartedly that Jesus can heal. Jesus can heal. Second thing that I think the lady was bold in is that she was bold in the face of others. Now ask yourself, are you holding back because you fear what others will say? Like once you come to grips with the truth, that Jesus can heal? Are you worried about what other people will say? 
Look at Mark. He's such an idiot. He's praying for healing. It's hopeless. Look, did you hear the doctors? He's crazy. Look at Jairus. Look at the lady. No fear. No shame. Just boldness. They said, forget the crowds. I know what I believe and what I need. And as a result, they were bold. Bold in action. Third thing is bold in action. Bold in action to take that step to get closer to Jesus. Remember, the lady pressed through a tight crowd to just, just touch his robe. It wasn't enough for her to just say, I believe that Jesus can heal. You need action. It's like me saying, you know, this painkiller can get rid of my headaches. I know that. I ain't stick it in my mouth, but it's, I know that. No, you got to actually take the medicine to go ahead and get better. Same deal. You need action. You can't just know it. You got to have action. Pray. Ask others to pray for you. Don't be shy. The lady wasn't shy. Get close to Jesus. Third thing is bold, or fourth thing of bold is to tell Jesus that you want to be healed. What? You want to be healed. You got to tell him. Jairus did it. The lady did it. Granted, after Jesus healed her, but the lady did tell him. See, Jesus didn't go around healing everybody he passed. Remember, this is a large crowd, and he wasn't playing the game of duck, duck, goose. Healed, 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 not healed, 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 healed. No. They actually had to come out and tell him, please heal me. There are examples of this. Luke 17, 11, 16. The 10 leprous men shouted out to Jesus, Jesus, master, have pity on us. He didn't, they didn't expect him to just walk by and say, healed, healed, healed. No. Matthew 20, 30 to 34, two blind men on the roadside shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus said, well, what do you want me to do? Lord, we want our sight. Bam. You got your sight back. Jesus wanted to hear from you. He wants to hear that you want to be healed. He wants that relationship. He wants to know that you truly are connected to him with that relationship. Boldness. Second thing is humbleness. Humble yourself to Jesus. Both Jairus and the lady fell to their feet and submitted to Jesus. They recognized that only he has the means to heal. And again, you need to recognize that only he has the means to heal you of your ills. Recognize that Jesus is all-powerful, and you, quite frankly, are not. Humble yourself to accept his will. To accept his will. Now, I'd be remiss at this point if I kept leading you to believe that Jesus would perform all the healing that we desire. I mean, I wholeheartedly believe that Jesus can heal and we should boldly and humbly take our petition to him. But our God is not a soda machine God. He's not a genie's bottle to rub and get wishes granted. And for those younger crowd, the soda machine thing is when you put the coin or credit card and you just push whatever button you want and you get exactly what you want in the bottom. That's not our God. No, our God is deeper than that and greater than that. See, God uses miraculous healings to get a point across. Now, one commentary said that miraculous healings in scripture serve to authenticate the word of the person speaking it and to illustrate the word. Essentially to make a point so that the witness can see that God's power and word are true, to amplify his power and prove that God is real, that God is real. So by being one, bold, and yet being too humble, we can then, three, amplify his power. The lady's healing was used by Jesus to make a point to the crowd that was following him. He is God and he can heal. He didn't have to make a big deal out of it. Jesus did. The 10 lepers who were healed, they made a point that we need to be thankful for this healing, where only one of the 10 came back and said, thank you. What was up with the other nine? point made by that healing blind man healed at the side of the road told us that jesus is here for all of us not just for the desirables walking with jesus even for the ones that the, cult, the culture said were undesirables no jesus said i'm there for i'm here for them too 
But let me add another part about amplifying his power, which is a challenge to all of us. When you are miraculously healed by Jesus, or you, if you know of somebody who was, will you proclaim it to everyone you know? You know, there was a time when Jesus would sometimes tell the people he healed, shh, don't tell anyone I did it. Because he knew it wasn't time yet for the world to know. But not anymore. Will you be bold in those moments to amplify our God to the people? I hope so. So the commentary went on to suggest that fringe ministries, those ministries at the edge of societies where no one really believes in Jesus, are the most right for miraculous healings. I, I disagree. This society is also right for such miraculous healings. If we all challenge ourselves to be bold, be humble, we too can amplify God's power as he works out miraculous healings in his name and save more souls for our Lord, Jesus Christ. Jesus heals. Jesus heals. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us pray. Dear Father God, Lord, thank you. Oh, thank you for this word that you gave us today, Lord. Thank you for the reminder that you are the same, Lord, yesterday, today, and forever, that all the power that you possess is still there. You can do miracles. You can heal us miraculously, Lord. And you want the whole world to know about it, Lord. So, Lord, I pray that your message takes root in all that I've heard it today. Lord, allow us to evaluate what it is that we really, really believe. And at the end of it, Lord, I pray that everybody that hears this reminds themselves and wholeheartedly believes that you can heal. And we need to bring all of our petitions to you. And you will see us, Lord. You will take care of us, Lord. And you will use it to further your kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your power, Lord. Thank you for being who you are, Lord, and who you always will be. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us this Sunday for our worship service. My name again is Mark C. And we are Hope Chapel Pro S Freedom Point, where we are all about Jesus and Jesus is all about freedom. I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Rob and Shalane to close us out. Rob, Shalane. <laughs> Amazing word. So Amazing far, word. So um, oh my gosh. Okay. That was an awesome word. I wanted to just um, share a little bit like about how I know I mentioned like last week about just, um, you know, mental health or mental health and mental illness and also, you know, people suffer from physical illness and stuff. Um, but for me, I don't know. I needed to hear that word just because yeah. I need to be like the woman with the issue of blood and I need to fight for my healing. You know, like, like I said last week, like a lot of us, we just learn to deal with our illnesses. And that, that was, I was talking about myself. Like I just deal with it on my own. Where Rarely do I take my negative thought patterns to God and ask him, God, please heal me. And, um, you know, I go to so many other things to look for that healing, but really like I've been so convicted um, just by hearing your word, Pastor Mark, about um, just fighting, you know, fighting mm -hmm. for it, yeah. pushing through the crowds like the woman with the issue of blood did and <laughs> getting my healing, you know? So um, that was, that was so good. Yeah, Thank you so like, much. You know, I love that, you know, your faith has healed you, you know, just having that faith that not thinking that God might, or, you know, maybe if I just give it to him, he will, but right. like knowing that he will, and just right. having that complete faith of just trusting in him. And just, like you said, just being humble and just laying at his feet, sitting at his feet, spending time with him and just knowing him more and more, you know, it's just, yeah. huh, it's just so powerful. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Thank yes. you God for that word, you thank know, you, and thank you. yeah. And this, um, Thank you guys for just joining us today. You know, we, we love you guys, you know, and next week we want you guys to join us. It's uh, Easter Sunday, you Ooh. know, invite, invite your family, your friend, whoever uh, God put on your heart, you know, we want you to invite them and just join us. And we just, uh, we love you with the love of the Lord.
Yes, we do. Have a great day and a great week.